Hello everyone and welcome to our second episode of Astro Bits. Like I told you, Astro Bits is about important astronomy news and important things happening in the astronomy circles, which you can be aware of. So let us start off with our session today. And today, since it's month of women in astronomy, February 11th is actually celebrated as the UN, UN International Day of Women and Girls in Astronomy. And then we have 8 March also coming. So I'm going to do both these issues dedicated more towards women in astronomy. So we'll start off with Vera Rubin, uh, women in astronomy. And Vera Rubin is a very interesting woman in astronomy. I'm going to tell you very soon about that. Uh, so she was an astronomer, American astronomer, who basically worked on what is called galaxy rotation plates. And I'm going to show you what that means. That uh, here's Vera Rubin. And here what you have is that this is the this is called the galaxy rotation curve. That means from the distance from the center of the galaxy, this is the galaxy, we measure the velocity of stars, right? Now, obviously, as per Kepler's law, what you would expect, like it is for the planets of the solar system, what you typically have is that you have uh, it goes as one by r squared. So as you move outside. The, you know, the, the center of mass is in the center. So as you move outside as one by r squared, your velocity should fall, which should come like this, right? This is the expected data. Now, what Vera Rubin did is she used observations. You can see here, spectroscopic observations. That is the standard way if you want to actually measure velocities, you have to do it through spectroscopy to something which is called the Doppler effect. So the Doppler effect helps you to actually measure the velocity of your sources using spectra. Now that's what uh, Vera Rubin did, and with that she actually studied the rotation curves of galaxies. And what she found was something very, very surprising. From starlight, she observed that actually the velocity as you go outwards, it actually seems to be increasing, right? Later on through radio observations in 21 centimeter line, we know we can actually connect these dots and actually see it clearly increases. Now, this was something very counterintuitive because we expected a one by r squared fall and instead here we instead had a raise, right? And the question was, why is this happening? Now, Vera Rubin, uh, she actually uh, checked this not for one galaxy, but for a set of galaxies and she was getting similar results. And therefore, what happened is she gave a very unique explanation to this problem. She said that this is basically happening because of something which was called dark matter. Okay. She coined the word dark matter. And dark matter is, for example, here you have a cluster of galaxies and you can see this reddish glow, this is, uh, which is coming in X-ray. You know that there's a lot of gas around there. And the dark matter lies in this region in the outskirts of galaxies, due to which the velocity of stars in the outer regions of galaxies uh, kind of increases like it's shown in this rotation curve or even 21 centimeter line and this is basically because these outskirts of this galaxy actually has dark matter so you have a large amount of dark matter around the galaxy the galaxy sitting in the center and that is what drives the motion of these stars as well as the gas in the outer regions of galaxies now where a Rubin can be cons uh, what I really found most uh, interesting about her is that this was a very revolutionary idea and it actually was something totally counterintuitive, which was difficult for the community to accept. And therefore, I would say that uh, this is a perfect example of bravery of a different kind, where you come out with a theory which is totally counterintuitive, but because you have confidence in your observations, you stick to your theory, right? So if data speaks, it does speak and you except the results that you're getting from your theory. Now, as a, a tribute to Vera Rubin, we have a new observatory which is coming up. So that's part of our Astro News, which is called the Vera Rubin Observatory. It was previously referred to as a Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. Basically, what it does is it is going to observe the sky repeatedly and uh, look for transients, look for objects which are changing in brightness. So it will constantly keep on checking the sky and giving us this this thing and it will do this survey which is called the legacy survey of space and time which is the lsst survey so this telescope will have a diameter of eight and a half meters almost it's a huge telescope situated in chile and first light is expected in january 2025 so you can actually have a look at uh, websites on the, this thing the construction is almost complete by next month 31st march it will be handed over to Ruben. 
and you'll have the camera ready by, uh, by September. The dome is going to be complete by the end of this year. And around this time next year, rather exactly today, the day I'm recording, the LSST camera will be ready for the on-sky thing. And you'll have first light by 4th April. So that's why I chose the date today, because 19th Feb, which is exactly a month from now, is when the LSST camera will be ready for sky. So we're all looking forward a lot to the LSST and the important results that we will get from this telescope.